If I stand in ovation, I want to invite to the podium Dr. George Atta. Oh, put your hands together for him. Praise God. Can you lift your right hand? Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Father, we thank you for such a day and such a time. Blessed Holy Spirit, we pray for such an illumination of light. Quicken our understanding. Cause us to be able to grasp your work and your movements in the past that we may see the future. Cause us to understand your universal administration and your work, your governmental ordinations. Cause us, O oh God, to trace the tracks, the footsteps of your flock. Cause us to see what you have done. Lord, out of this congregation, raise up a people unto yourself mighty men of villa giants in the spirit those who are fervent in the spirit raise up mighty men in the name of jesus who raise up the foundations of many generations and who shall also rebuild the old waste may they be called a restorer of the street with dwellings in the name of jesus the son of the living god lord as your word goes forth let graces be distributed upon the hearers let grace be dispensed upon the hearers let ancient mandates and mantles that are scattered be received by my recipient in the name of jesus as many as are willingly hearted lord let there be a deposit by the blessed spirit which will culminate in the last great harvest to come thank you jesus the lord there is a work you are working you are working a work in your people lord and we open up to cooperate with your operations in the name of jesus let the inward operation the inward working let the inward ability be stirred up refresh our spirit like the dews of hermon in jesus name lord raise us up cause us to stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us cause us to stand upon the shoulders and begin to see high to see to the horizon to see to the end of time to see from the perspective of the past cause us to stand upon the shoulders of those who have gone in jesus name that your work will be perfected that your, your bride will be prepared that the body will be matured unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ the lord who will await your coming with joy rejoicing and the gladness of heart thank you lord the lord you have sanctified unto yourself a people that everyone sitting here has a unique appointment with thee with destiny with assignment with an agenda that is divine thank you jesus we give you glory and praise now and forevermore in jesus name the son of god amen, amen. hallelujah amen. then we turn to the book of songs of solomon songs of solomon In Romans 15 verse 4, the Bible tells us that whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through the patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Praise God. And now, I trust God that this meeting will minister unto you. That, oh, thank you, Jesus. Songs of Solomon. Verse 7. 
1 verse 7. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. For why shouldest I be turned aside? For why shouldest I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? Verse 8. If thou knowest not, O thou fairest, among women, go forth, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock, and feed thy kids by the beside the shepherd's tent. If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock, and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tent. Hallelujah. See the footsteps of the flock. How many of you are ready for this session? Can I see by hand? Hallelujah. The footsteps of the flock. There's a unique lesson here in verse 8 of Songs of Solomon, chapter 1. From verse 7, this is a discourse between Solomon the king and a woman a commoner by name who is the shulamite an ordinary town country girl and solomon now falls in love with this lady and um, they speak one to another that this course begins with the woman and she speaks to solomon and solomon speaks to her and actually they foreshadow or they typify christ and his church and in verse 7, the woman asked the king, Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. So the woman is telling the king, Tell me where you feed, where you feed your flock. Show me where you make your flock to rest at noon. Margo, you're welcome. You can join us here. Hallelujah. For why should I be turned aside by the flocks of thy companions? Uh, it's not difficult. The flocks of his companions are the laws, let me say, the pastors and those leading ministries and leading congregations. The woman is telling Solomon, I want you to show me where your flock feet and where you make them rest at noon because I don't want to go I don't want to go astray why should I be led astray by the flocks of your companions the flocks of the lost the lost companions are the people the, the people Jesus have made them overseers of our churches and ministries and the truth here is that without knowing the answer you can be led astray even by a pastor or by a bishop or an overseer <laughs> And the woman, the woman is asking, for why should, should I be as one that tended aside by the flocks of thy companions? You know, the lost companions in this regard are the pastors and those who are overseers of ministries. There are some things, if you, if you do not require a direct answer from the Lord, you can be turned aside or led astray by those who are of the Lord. But a woman asks a unique question. She said, Tell me, where do you feed? Where do you feed your flock? And where do you make your flock to rest at noon? This is the question of the woman. And the answer of Solomon to the woman is in the next verse. In verse 8, Solomon said, If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, go forth thy way by the footsteps of the flock. And feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tent. This is what it means. Let me explain the question of the woman. The woman is seeking for two things. Food and rest. Food and rest. The woman is longing for food and rest. Food and rest. Rest in Christ. And food. Real food. The riches of his word. That's which really truly satisfies. Real bread. The, the genuine bread from heaven. The woman is longing for food and rest. 
And the woman asks the king, Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, and why, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. Look at the noonday. It is the hottest time of the day. At that time, huh, mankind is full of hustle and bustle. It's full of uprising and downsitting, full of movement. Everyone is busy at the noonday. But the Lord, such a busy moment, when men are full of busyness and hustle and bustle, he causes his flock to rest in the midst of the hustle and bustle. In the midst of the business, he gives his own flock rest. And this is the kind of rest this woman is longing for. In the midst of worry, anxieties, calamities, troubles, tribulations, busyness, people minding their own business and doing a lot of things, I've seen that your flock have found rest in such a moment. So tell me, where you make your flock to rest at noon? So there is rest at noon. And show me where you feed your flock. So this woman is longing. This is one who loves Solomon. This is typified by a believer who loves the Lord. And a believer genuinely longs after God, after Christ, as the soul lover of his soul. And now this believer is asking, Lord, there's a kind of holy dissatisfaction within, a kind of a longing for the depths of God, for the deep things of God. I want rest, the, the, the rest that came out of redemption, a kind of walk with you. I'm longing for a kind of food, precious delicacies. I mean, rich word, that which is full of life, the savor of life. How many of you have been there before? Although you are receiving word and you are doing a lot of things, yet within you, you can feel that this is not the place. There's a higher sphere where you are longing for. There's a higher sphere where your soul is panting for. You are looking for a higher region of rest, a higher sphere. You want to be well watered and well fed by God. You want a kind within you. There is a holy dissatisfaction. Your spiritual, spiritual taste buds and appetite desires are stimulated. You are looking for, the, for more of God. God, God, long God. You long for God and for a conformity after his will. And this is the case of this woman and what she is, she is requesting for. Show me rest and show me the real food that satisfies. And this is the answer Solomon now gives to the woman. Or the answer Christ now gives to the, to the longing believer. This is what Christ is saying. If thou knowest not, verse 8, O thou fairest among women, go forth thy way by the first steps of the flock. Now, the answer to finding food and rest is this go forth thy way by the four steps of the flock what are the four steps of the flock because the four steps of the flock are the very answer to finding food and rest the lord has his flock from the day of pentecost when the church was born he has had his flock until this day almost two thousand years and now the lord is telling the woman that one way to find food and rest is to trace the four steps of the flock what are the four steps of the flock the tracks of the flock the footprints of the flock just examine carefully and see where i have led my flock from the beginning to the present day where i have led my flock just examine me carefully trace the first steps of the flock the greener pastures they have been all the places they have been the places they have walked through if you can trace the four steps of the flock from dispensation to dispensation you will find food and rest and today we are here to trace the four steps of the flock that was to say to see the lost flock how he has led them from the day of pentecost unto this present day and as we trace we are finding rest and food as we trace we are finding greener pastures as we trace why we are stirring up holy desires within we are stirring up holy dissatisfaction we'll come to a place where we will see that ah we have not attained it <laughs> we'll come to a place where we we'll realize that ah i thought i was there but now i know that i'm far away i'm not yet there yet the word fills me and makes me hungry at the same time you, your eyes will be open and you begin to stand upon the shoulders of the men who have gone before us and see how God used them, how they walk with God. Hallelujah. Amen. And as you understand them, maybe we are short, we are limited, we can only see those in our age and they become our standard. 
But as we look back, we realize that, oh, <laughs> there are heights and there are depths. <laughs> you begin to shake. And as you see the height, God now presents the height to you. And as you pursue, God now takes you into his depth so much that each of us here, we have the potential to be as close with God more than any person has ever yet. Even from the days of Enoch and even Paul, each of us here, we have the potential to be the closest ever in all of history. Hallelujah. We all have that potential. It is freely given to us. Praise God. Because the average believer, not the average believer, almost a lot of believers hardly know the past. So we become just sufficient with what we hear in the present. <laughs> but what I know is that most of the dynamic believers today, you can realize that they pick their fires from the ancient days. <laughs> Charles Adam Spurgeon said, if you can rake the ashes of the past, you can find fire for the present. <laughs> you find fire for the present. <laughs> and if you can hold, without seeing the past, you cannot even understand the future clearly. The future we are talking about can best be understood if you can look from the past to the future. And by the time you get to tomorrow's evening, the concern, the moves of God, the coming moves of God, you realize that until you have understood certain things and until you have had certain foundations, you may not be able to participate in what is coming. But the Lord has his church, and the church has gone through a lot of things. A lot of things. When I look into history, something stirs up within me. Something is stayed. Something is stayed. I begin to feel God's heartbeat and begin to feel God's the vibrations and the impulses. What thrills and troops the Father's heart and what the Father has been longing for in all of these ages. Hmm. Maybe there's someone here. Who rise up in our days and will fulfill all that the father has desired in all these ages so what we are doing tonight today is just a foundation to help you see clearly that is why you are here it's by divine appointment hallelujah church history is so big so much that i'm trying to crash in a little meeting summarize and to put together in just one meeting what sometimes can take two years to actually expound and teach <laughs> so what i'll do is that <laughs> some of the things i'll mention them but i trust god that you go and search it yourself go and search and i'm telling you god will take you far So for it to be simple, I like to approach it in a fourfold dimension because the church is undergoing or has undergone certain phases. You know. So I like to put it this way. There is a formation of the church. The formation of the church, the deformation of the church, the re reformation of the church, and the conformation of the church. These are the four phases. There is the formation of the church. Then there is the deformation of the church. Then there is the reformation of the church. Then there is the conformation of the church. The formation of the church took place around AD, between AD 30 and AD 32. That's when the formation of the church took place. The deformation of the church took place from AD 313. 313, 313 AD. That was when the deformation of the church took place. Then the reformation of the church began in 1517. 1517.
But what is left is the conformation of the church. And that is what we'll consider tomorrow's evening. Tomorrow's evening. Tomorrow's evening. And tonight we'll look more into the reformation and bringing out the recovery, the diverse stages of the recovery, and what has been recovered, what is being recovered, and what is yet to be recovered. Praise God. The church was born. When was the church born? On the day of Pentecost. In Matthew 16, Jesus said, I'll build my church, and the gate of Hades shall not prevail against it. He asked the disciples, Who do men say that I, the Son, I am? And they gave him diverse answers. Some say that was John the Baptist, and others, Jeremiah, Elysius, Elias. Then Jesus asked the disciples personally. Then Peter, by revelation of the Spirit, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter. I say unto you, Thou art Peter. Or unto thee, Thou art Petrus. And upon this Petra, I will build my church. And the gate of Hades shall not prevail against it. 